glad for the Lord. I'm glad. Thank God. I'm glad I'm saved, aren't you? Glad I'm saved. Hey, I don't know if you know it or not, but we're special people. We've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. I, we've been set apart, made ready for the Master's use. Amen. We've been washed in the precious blood, Brother Tony. Thank God. We've been cleansed like none of them. And it ain't all over yet. It ain't all over yet. The best. As Brother Dow sung so many times, the best is yet to come, and I'm going to be a part of it. We used to sing a song, said they can't crown him king till I get home. Praise the Lord, and I'm glad. The Word of God said in chapter 2 of First Peter, verse 1, he said, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, <laughs> all guile, all hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speakings, man, he's asking a lot of us, ain't he? You know, it's human nature, Ronnie. It's human nature to, to uh, participate in this first verse. It sure is. If we ain't careful, I'm telling you what, the flesh is an ornery scutter, as Daddy said. That flesh has to be crucified daily. Yes, sir. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we'll be drug into it really unawares. As newborn babes, listen to me, ain't asking us Ronnie to be a hero. He said, but folks, get like you used to be. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up at a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Verse 7, Unto you therefore which believe he is precious. Do you believe he's precious tonight? But unto them which, is, which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being dis disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Verse 9, I love this scripture, preached on it so many times. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Ronnie, we need to nail that verse 9 on the wall and read it to the devil every day and say, listen, I'm a chosen generation. Yeah. I am a royal priesthood. I'm part of a holy nation. I'm a peculiar people, and I'm going to show forth the praises of God. Amen. Now listen, God has blessed us beyond measure taken care of us time and time again. Yeah. Made a way for us where there seemeth to be no way. Amen. Right. I've said that quite often. God has sent us help, Ronnie, yeah. time after time Amen. after time. Since the beginning of time, God Almighty has taken care of his people. Right. God has taken care 
only one time in his word, Jesus took a couple of his disciples up on the hill one day and was transformed before them. They saw something that nobody else had seen. Moses desired to see the Lord, desired to see the Lord. And the word of God teaches us there in the book of Exodus that the Lord passed by and Moses was only able to look on his backside. But time and time again, and you being under the sound of my voice, whether in this building or viewing by live stream, you know time and time again that the Lord has sent you help in your despair and in your time of need yeah. and the time of trouble. And there ain't nobody that I know of has ever laid eyes on God or his son Jesus after Jesus was glorified, rose from the dead, and went to heaven. Yeah. But listen to me. The word of God teaches us that God is committed to us that he will take care of us. Now God has used, I preached not long ago uh, about angels a few months ago, and I preached about them ascending and descending. God has used angels, Brother Ronnie, right. to send us help. You'll find in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9 that the Bible said that Noah was a good man. He was a righteous man, right? Sure did. The word of God said he was a perfect man and he walked with God. And God used Noah to spare or to save his family. Now you pray for me tonight. God used Noah to do that. Now the spirit of God had to be upon Noah and had to be with Noah because the scripture said there that Noah walked with God. But God used him. On over in the book of Genesis, you'll find out how that God used Joseph. And I preached on that not too long ago. Sent him down into a strange land to save a whole nation. His father's household, the children of Israel. And God used him. And God made a way. You can turn from Genesis over into the book of Exodus. And you'll find out that God called a man by the name of Moses and told Moses, said, now, I am going to use you to get my children out of bondage. And the word of God says, and we all know, we preached and the Sunday school teachers have taught how that Noah kind of argued with God. But God did use Noah to bring the children of Israel out of bondage, sure it is. And God has used them time and time and time again. You go from there over into the book of Joshua. Joshua teaches us that Moses had died, but God spoke to, Mo to Joshua. And he said, Joshua, I want you to do the job that my servant Moses did not get accomplished. Moses had brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And the Bible said that they wandered around in the space of just a, a, a small, how big of an area was it that they traveled in 40 years? More or less, they just went around in circles. But Moses done exactly. It was, it was God, but it was not God in the physical body. Listen to me tonight. God used Moses, and then he used Joshua. Right. Amen? Yeah. He sure did. Yeah. I'm glad tonight to be used of God. Right. I'm glad that God has used other people yeah. to help me. Amen? Yeah. Amen? I couldn't make it in this church tonight without you folks. I, I, a lot of times if a church does good, boy, they say, who's a pastor? and the pastor gets all the credit. Well, it may have happened other places, but I am what I am, and I've got to accomplish what I've got to accomplish, Brother Ronnie, through and by the help of the Lord, Amen. but a good bunch of people that he sent my way to help me along. Yeah. 
a little bit quiet tonight, but that's all right. I don't have to preach as loud, do I? And don't have to preach as hard. The Bible teaches us, as Brother Toby taught this morning in Acts chapter 12, that God used an angel to free Peter. Yes, sir. And the Word of God teaches us time and time again. And I won't get into what these boys was taught, but he's used angels many a times. But God himself, listen, there was men that had seen angels running with the natural eye. And they had seen, they, uh, 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 Moses saw in the fire a, 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 a bright light. But he never got to look upon the face of God. But the Bible teaches us he, when God, listen, when God wants something done, he calls on one of us, and we're to be used of God. Now listen to me. I'm going to get a little closer home. This won't take long tonight. You say you had all the time, preacher, but I promise you it won't take long. After God has done all of that, even, Ronnie, when we, each one of us, in this building tonight, or I would say, uh, uh, anybody that's ever been saved, Jesus Christ himself has never come in a physical body and put his arms around somebody and spoke to them and looked them in the eye and told them that they needed to come to him and turn to him. It's never happened. Listen to me. He has. He has sent him, his spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Ronnie. He, that spirit has come and dealt with heart like he did this morning when Sister Debbie was saved. Come back to God. Praise God. It was the spirit of God. I preached. The singer sang. Brother Toby did a wonderful, give a wonderful invitation with his lesson this morning. But it took God sending the Spirit down to speak to Sister Debbie's heart that she would be saved. Peter recorded there. Said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You say, preacher, what you getting at? You just hold on just a minute. I think it would have been a wonderful thing, even though Moses argued with God, even as we do, but God himself using Moses to make history and using one man to go down and stand against a wicked man called Pharaoh uh -huh. and say, God said, for you to let my people go. Uh -huh. That's amazing. And the word of God said that God stood by Moses as he promised he would do. Right. I'm sure as Moses stood there running with his knees a knocking, banging against each other. And he looked big old Pharaoh and not saying that I don't know how big a man Pharaoh was, but he had a big position. Poor old Moses walked up. He had just left his father-in-law sheep on the backside of the desert. Walked up there. Here he was. I'm telling you, James, I would say he was not dressed very well, but he went with authority. But first of all, the enemy would come to him as he would come to us. Say, boy, you know, I never will forget my first message that I preached at Emmons Church of God. Man, I was a nervous wreck, and the devil knew it, and he had no mercy on me. James, I remember it like it was yesterday, being almost 40 years ago. I was standing in front of the mirror in our bathroom of shaving. And the devil looked at me, and he said, you don't even look like a preacher, do you? I said, no, I don't. And man, you're talking about somebody 
that felt like, and I always want to stay that way. Who am I to do such a job as this? But Moses had to stand up there, and it had to be the presence of God upon him when he looked at Pharaoh, and he said, Pharaoh said, what do you want? Can you imagine how it went? What do you want? What are you doing here? It's about like our little buddy Charlie. You know, Charlie don't have no uh, filters. You know, if he thinks that he said, what are you doing talking to me? A few weeks ago when Mom was here, you know, everybody loves Charlie. And Mom went up to him at the church and said, Charlie, honey. And she was expecting Charlie. He said, how are you, man? And she said, Charlie, I'm Richard's mommy. Charlie looked at mommy and said, I don't care who you are. <laughs> but like that first Sunday they came to church, Kinky said, here, little boy, get you some candy. I don't want your old candy. What do you have for you? Can you imagine Moses standing up there? I'm Moses. So, yeah. what are you doing here in my presence? I come to tell you what God said. Yeah, right. Come on, church. The devil will defeat you in everything you do if you allow him to. Amen. He'll do you. You say, preacher, you all know that this you don't know that this happened. I'd say I could just about bet the farm if I was a bad man. That's exactly what happened. Moses walked up and said, I got a message from God. You stinking dog. Been out there with sheep. You, you, you up here telling me that God sent you. Don't the devil do each one of us like that? Yeah, Come on! Yeah. Make you feel in, inferior, uh -huh. insufficient. Peter said you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Right. But it's going to be proved one of these days. Right. The word of God said that Moses told him, he said, God said to let my people go. Moses said, I ain't listening to you. Moses probably walked out of the presence of Pharaoh feeling like a whoop pup. Yeah. But God's hand was upon Moses. Right. And the plagues came to Pharaoh. And they came until Pharaoh said, get up and get out of here. Right. Ronnie is such a task as that. The easy thing to do was for Moses to say, now God... The best way to get this job done is for you, yourself, to go talk to Moses. God said that's not the way it's going to be. I'm saving myself. Come on! He said, what are you talking about, preacher? And then when God used Joseph to save the, the, the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, his father's house. Well, it would have been a good thing if God himself had have been there. Why did God not go there? That's a point I'm trying to get across tonight. Why in the world didn't God do the job that he sent a man to do? Then we get down when Grace and mercy came through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Salvation had come to the face of the earth for the first time. God himself, Brother Ronnie, could have come down. Brother Mike spoke this morning when, when, when the angel spoke to Mary. He told her, Mary, you're highly favored. God, why didn't you do that? He said, because I'm saving myself. Why is he saving himself, church? He's saving himself 
for a peculiar people, for a royal priesthood. Listen to me. It's all coming down to one thing. God sent his son into this world to, to redeem the world through and by his blood. We walk around as whip pups sometimes. I know I do. Amen. The devil tries to defeat me. Listen, and tries to make me think, man, I'll get one message down. And it happened today as I was finishing up studying this message. And the enemy has come to me for 40, almost 40 years. And the enemy has come to me and said, well, looks like you got a message for tonight. But what about Wednesday night next Sunday? You know what? God has been faithful. He said, Richard, help many years ago. You step out and I'll give you what you need. Yeah, now, the best thing to do to make every service perfect and to make every service right, the only thing to do, and he could do it, is for him to come down in every church, in every church service, and make himself known in the flesh. You said people everywhere would be saved. Oh, at first it would be exciting. It, at first it would be brand new. But after a while, people would be as they are tonight here in this community. I thank God for a good crowd here. Could be more. We got a lot out sick, but we got a good crowd. But we have got people, listen to me, that God has blessed. Yeah. I'm telling you what, I'm not complaining, as I've said before, but people will ring my, sometimes you've been on the phone with me, uh, many of you know, both of them's ringing at the same time. Oh, preacher, I want prayer. Oh, preacher, my family, listen, we need prayer. Oh, mommy's sick, daddy's sick, the baby's sick. Oh, God move in a mighty way. Tony, you've seen it as long as you've been a Christian. Soon they get their prayers answered. Oh, listen, they're nowhere to be found. Their hearts at Walmart, their hearts here, their hearts there, but their hearts in the woods. Yes, sir. But I'm telling you what, God Himself is saving himself for a special day, and that day is for us. Yeah. Yeah. I said so many times tonight, and I'll say it again, God had the ability and had the power yeah. to present himself yeah. in the physical body to, per to perform the work that he would get glory. Mm -hmm. But he chose not to. Our brother recorded. He said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Now listen to me. Here comes in one of my favorite verses. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16 said, what? For the Lord Himself. Uh -huh. Amen forever. Ronnie, for man, I don't compare no way, shape, or form to Moses, to Joseph, to Joshua, to Jesus, to any of the angels. But listen to me. When time shall be no more, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, said for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. No angel is good enough. No Moses is good enough. No Joshua is good enough. No Joseph is good enough. But the Lord himself for the first time in history since the beginning of time for the Lord himself is going to show up to do the job. Amen. Amen. You're saying, you're saying, preacher,
that his power is not strong enough or his voice is not strong enough to receive us. Oh, it's plenty powerful enough. It's plenty powerful enough. You mean to tell me that he couldn't call Michael or, or he couldn't call one of these others and say, I want you to, Gabriel, uh, Gabriel's going to sound the horn, but the, the word of God said, but the Lord himself is going to descend. Descend. I ain't very smart, but you go down to the airport and, and, and they start, listen, a plane comes in to land, that means it's descending. <laughs> and if a plane's taken off, that means it's ascending. Listen, when Jesus left here, listen, there were some angels appeared there. Man, those men would say, say, oh Lord, what in the world's wrong with you? Said this same Jesus that you see going away, ascending unto heaven, he's coming again in like manner. Praise the Lord forever. All of these important jobs that's being done throughout the ages of time. Tell me, church, we ain't special. Tell me we don't mean something to him. Tell me, listen, that God, this whole thing has focused around one thing and one thing only. It's a second coming of Jesus Christ to receive the church up to him. Amen. I don't know if I'm getting across what I'm wanting to get across tonight. But God has done all of these marvelous works and many miracles that's been yeah. taking place down through the ages of time, throughout all the ages of the Word of God. And even after that, we've seen miracles. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But listen to me. Mm -hmm. The Lord's coming back after us. Yeah. The Lord Himself. Me and Tony was talking the other day. I told him, I said, we used to sing a song. And I wish we could do it tonight, but I know we can't because I can't remember but uh, a little, about two lines of it. And, and I believe Rex Neeland brought it out many years ago and said, you never understood just who I was. When I said I'm a child of the king. I don't know what the next line is. But in the course says, tell me how do I look leaving this world? Uh -huh. and, and, and one of the country singers a few years ago, I thought that's the coolest video I, I ever saw in my life. And I I kind of, you know, it, it kind of struck home. Who was that country singer? Jen, I know, I'm sure. Brought that song out. How do you like me now? Huh? Tommy Key. Tommy Key? <laughs> no, I told you she'd know. <laughs> Tommy Key, that video talked about, you know, and pretty girls he tried to get a date with. They all looked at him like he's stupid. <laughs> I told people all along, I said, how in the world did you end up in Boone County? I said, well, it was a divine intervention amongst other things. They said, what was the other things? I said, there wasn't no daddy in Fent County to let me date their girls. So I had to come to Boone <laughs> County to get one that didn't know me. Old Bob didn't know me from Adam. He said, okay. Man, did he regret that. <laughs> Listen to me. One of these days, one of these days, listen to me. I, I, I know the church, and I, I, I admire so many of you. We have been through tough times in the last two or three years. Sister Rosie, started with you losing Nelson, and on and on and on. We've had so much loss. And you're so beat down. Nancy, you've shared with me, cried herself to sleep night after night after night, and on and on and on. Had sickness. 
had loss of loved ones. But aren't you glad you're still holding on? Aren't you glad to turn in that you still wait? Man, you say holding on, not hardly. I would have done fail, I would have done let go. But they, somebody had a hold of me. It's going to be worth it. We sung another song. It'll be worth it after all. Get ready to sing us a song. But the point I tried to get across tonight, all of these things that's taken place, of all of these great events, that God Almighty, Sister Melinda, could have stepped out and man just showed himself to everybody. He chose not to. But as he put everything together, God has set leaders, kings, and judges. He's instituted, still doing it today. And he's working through them. God himself could have showed his glory so many times. But he chose to save himself. I ain't letting nobody see me till all of my children gets to see me. Peter said, you're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. God Almighty could have had any of them, but many of them would be worthy. But I said, Moses looked at Pharaoh, and he said, God said, let my people go. Moses could step out on the clouds. Say, I got another announcement to make. God said, Time shall be no more. And all of you children of His come forth. You know what? God's got the power to use Moses as He did back then. We would leave this earth, lose all the gravity that holds us here, and we would all ascend into heaven. But the Lord Himself, listen to me. Do you feel as special as you ought to tonight? I know the Bible said God resists the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. Listen to me, church. We're, a, we're not a nobody. We're not a, 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 we're not a forget, forgotten generation. Listen, we're no orphans, but the word of God said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel. Look at the devil tonight. You tell him when he's trying to weight you down, when he's trying to convince you that you're nothing. You said, listen to me. I'm part of a number that couldn't be numbered. I'm part of the family of God. And you would love, you would love for me to miss the greatest of greatest events that will ever take place is when the Lord himself think about it, for the Lord himself how it could happen tonight the word of God goes on to say there in Thessalonians said the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we when we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in there, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Think of that. I stood by the bedside of so many times and people say, Preacher, who am I? Who am I? I'm such an unworthy vessel running down her face saying but I know I know without a shadow of a doubt that he saved my soul listen to me so many times I've had people to look at me and they say preacher is it something I've done because this sickness has come upon me is it something that I've done that I've suffered such a great loss Toby was talking about Peter and James this morning. God 
help me not to get into their lessons. But God just brought this to my mind. But Toby was talking about Peter and James. They had killed, they had killed James. And Peter was spared. And the word of God, as Brother Toby done such a wonderful job explaining it this morning, that the church prayed. And God sent an angel and loosed the chains and unlocked the door. But the end of the story was, as we preached so many times, Peter ended up being crucified. Come on. When Peter found out that he was going to be crucified as they crucified his Lord, I would imagine that Peter said, please don't crucify me, please. We're going to crucify you. He said, would you kill me some other way? They said, we're going to crucify you. Peter may have looked at him and said, can't you stone me? Can't you cut my head off as you did some of the others? They said, no, we're going to crucify you. Peter said, all right, I've tried to talk you out of it. He said, it's not. He said, I'm ready to die. But it's not that you know that I'm trying to get out of this thing that I don't compare to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he said if you're going to crucify me do one thing he said crucify me upside down he said because I'm not listening to him isn't that one but the word of God said for the Lord himself of all these major events that's happened down through the ages of time. This one he saved himself for. And this one involves us. For the Lord himself shall the sea. How many is happy to say tonight? Oh, yes. that you gave your son. Lord, you love us so much that you're coming back yourself to receive us unto you. And Heavenly Father, I would ask tonight that you would just help us to be encouraged. <coughs> help us, Lord, that we would anxiously await your coming. And Lord, that know that we'll rise in your likeness. We'll change, be changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. I would ask tonight, Lord, that you would help us to stand with brand new courage. Lord, that we would stand up in the face of the enemy and say, you may not, you may try to make me think that I'm not and that I'm less. 
I want to remind you one day the Lord himself is going to come after me. And I'm a child of the King. But Lord, I pray that you would bring courage to those, Lord, that's beaten down. Strength, Lord, to the heavy heart. Help to the weak tonight, Lord. Meet every need as only you can. Someone under the sound of my voice, Lord, listening that don't know you in the part and forgiveness and sin. Help them to realize tonight that they can be part of that number. Part of that number. But they've got to be washed in your precious blood. Meet every need as only you can. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Revelation records that we'll all stand in judgment. The loving Savior, the merciful God, will then be our righteous judge. Folks that denied him, James, folks that turned their back on him, well, at that day, look him in the eye. And many will hear the voice that says, Depart from me, I never knew you. What a sad time. But what a wonderful time for the saved tonight. Well, it's been a good place to be. I thank God for another <coughs> privilege and honor to preach. Like it's the first time you heard me preach and you like it. It was good, buddy. Praise the Lord.